Hi, I'm happy to be here to talk to you about digital holographic microscopy. This amazing holographic video I show here is pretty, but it is also full of data, and in addition, the creation was self-friendly. In the next eight minutes, I will talk shortly about how digital holographic microscopy works, and I will give a taste of which results it can produce. Holomonitor is a live cell imaging system based on digital holographic microscopy. The Holomonitor software can record images and quantify many aspects of the daily life of a cell without any labels or stains. The results come directly from cells living their happy, undisturbed lives inside the incubator. But Holomonitor is even more cell-friendly than that, and the technology we use explains much about why. So how does digital holography work? Think of light as a wave. The striped lines in the image are wave fronts moving in the direction of the arrow. The wave fronts will slow down when passing through the cell. After having passed through the cell, the light will resume its speed, but it will still have been delayed, sh shown in the striped pattern below the cell in the image. That delay is what we measure. It is called a phase shift. As the light only passes through the cells, there is no energy transfer to the cells, and the light does not influence them in any way. It is a non-invasive method to image live cells. As only very low light intensity is needed, the cells are only exposed to 0.2 milliwatts per square centimeter. When the light has passed through the cells, it is mixed with a reference light and a hologram is created. This pattern, this hologram, is the raw data, which is used to calculate the phase shift. That, in turn, is used to calculate the thickness of the cell in every pixel in the image. Then the software creates a cell image based on those calculations. As the data contains thickness values, the image can be presented in both 2D and in 3D. The colors in the images represent the thickness of the cells. In these two images here, we have set the background to blue, the thicker cells to turquoise, and the rounded up cells, which are thickest, become dark grayish whitish. Once we have the images, the analysis begins with cell identification. As the holographic images contain data about the thickness of the cells, the software can determine what is cell and what is background, and it can set the cell boundaries. Once the cells have been identified, we can pull a lot of hard data from the images. Even the image of a single cell gives us more than 30 morphological parameters. An image showing many cells will give data both on the individual cells and on the cell population. If images are captured showing the same position every few minutes, the results can be presented as a time-lapse movie showing what happens to the cells. In this case, a cell division. Again, data can be provided both for the individual cells and for cell populations. We can show cell movement as tracks, but also give the speed and the direction. Here is the track for the first the mother cell and then after cell division, the daughter cells. For cell morphology, we can give the 30 different parameters. In this case, we show the cell volume, first for the mother cell and then after cell division for the two daughter cells. The cell tracking can also give us information about the cell fate. What happens to the cell? In this case, the cell divides once. It can also show if cells are dying and it can build family trees. So what do people use this technology for? Petecha and colleagues investigated how late changes in the differentiation process affected the cells. The left image shows how stem cells developed into adipocytes or osteoblasts. The researchers then induced those cells to shift to the other type of cell mid-differentiation by switching the cell culture medium. The graphs to the right are based on morphology data. The top graph shows that using only two different morphological parameters, 
roughness and thickness makes it possible to separate the undifferentiated stem cells represented in green from the full adipocytes in yellow and the osteoblasts shown in brown. The lower graph shows that using the same morphological parameters, the pre-stages of the differentiated cells and even fully differentiated repurposed cells can be separated from the full osteoblasts and adipocytes. So green is again the undifferentiated, brown represents osteoblasts. The triangles are the full osteoblasts. The circle to the left of the triangle is the pre-osteoblast, while the squares to the right represent the full osteoblasts. Yellow shows adipocytes. Again, the triangle is the full adipocytes. The circle shows the pre-adipocytes, and the and the square shows the repurposed full adipocytes. Using only two parameters, morphological parameters, these cells can be sorted out. In another publication, Austin and colleagues compared morphology and movement for human multipotential stromal cells from two sources. They showed that stem cells sourced from easily accessible periosteum was of equal quality as stem cells sourced from not as easily accessible donated bone marrow. Both sources provided stem cells that grew and that could differentiate into three different cell types. The purple cells are the shape of the normal multipotential stromal cells. The rounded white up cells show dividing cells. Not only hard data are provided, you will also have beautiful movies that give insight into the everyday life of the cells. In the blue movie, you can see the drama of cell divisions and cell deaths of human iPS stem cells. There are mean bullies chasing the smaller ones, and the cells tend to cluster and build colonies. To the right, the gray movie shows human CD34 plus umbilical cord blood cells growing on a microgrid for 96 hours. How they move, how they divide, how they change. This movie is courtesy of Dr. Daniel Stockholm. Thank you for listening and if you have more questions regarding digital holography, please contact us either through our webpage or through any other contact options. Have a nice day.